Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I've got the uh, Skydio 2 out today, and one of the things that I've always wanted to try with this drone is uh, keyframes. So we're gonna try it today. They just did an update uh, where they improved the keyframes a little bit. I will uh, put that up on the screen right now. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna try it out and, uh, and see how it does. Uh, what keyframes is, is think of it as waypoints or yeah, even a little more than. So what you do is you set points in space with the drone and it will fly those points and uh, do it in a repeatable way and a cinematic way. And it's a very intuitive thing. Usually when I do this kind of stuff, I do it the first time on screen with you guys so that you see me stumble through it. And often I figure, hey, if I make a mistake, you can avoid the mistake that I made or whatever. In this case, I actually have done a couple of them before because uh, I, I just wanted to, I, I don't fly the Skydio 2 that often, uh, and I just wanted to give you a little better experience. Uh, so yeah, the, another word about the Skydio 2. This is a drone that, uh, believe it or not, I purchased this drone in I believe it was November of 2019. I think they introduced it in October. You were first able to order it in November. I think I took delivery of this in uh, mid-December of 2019. So it's a drone that's been around for a while, but it is still the smartest drone I own. It, this thing is just amazing, uh, the capabilities that it has. The uh, obstacle avoidance and uh, autonomy that this drone can do. So anyway, let's quit messing around. Uh, let's get this bird in the air. Okay, so uh, I've got the, uh, the drone fired up and the controller fired up and started up the app. So uh, yeah, it should, uh, we should be ready to go here in a second. So it says we're ready to fly, so let's click on that. And yeah, it looks like the drone's ready to go, starting the autonomy engine. So hold to launch, so let's go ahead and take off. And you notice I'm taking off from the, uh, the Skydio 2 case, and I've got the drone pointed away from me. And there we go. So there we go, uh, the drones, one of the things I like about the Skydio 2 is it automatically starts recording when you take off. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is uh, go down to the bottom here where it says motion track and we're going to click on keyframe. And you'll see at the bottom, uh, you'll see a, uh, an area there uh, that you can add a keyframe, but we're going to move forward a little bit. It says, uh, one of the things that Skydio tells you is the closer you are to your takeoff point with your first keyframe, the better. So we're just going to go out a little bit and we're going to add right there. And then let's, uh, let's go up and out a little bit. And we're just going to continue to add keyframes here as we go. And keyframes are points in space that the drone is going to fly to uh, when we run the mission. So let's, uh, let's go on over to the uh, cell phone tower here. And this is one of the things that I thought would be kind of interesting to, uh, to take a look at. So let's go, to the, let's go to the base of this guy right here. And we're going to click Add. And then let's just go straight up. Part way up, let's add another one. I think the more keyframes you add, the better. Uh, you, can, you can put up to 100 keyframes in a mission. So, uh, so let's go a little higher and add. And then let's, uh, let's kind of uh, spin around this guy. And we'll add keyframes as we go and we'll see how the drone handles it. There's another one. So I guess what I'm kind of saying here is if you were, uh, had, a, had a business, an inspection business, 
Keyframes are something you could use to help automate that process. Although I suspect that uh, uh, Skydio might have other software for that, but uh, yeah, let's go up a little bit higher and let's go ahead and rotate around. We're gonna go all the way around this guy. And that's me manually rotating around here. I'm gonna back it off just a little. And let's add one right there. And you can see our track here as we go. On the screen recording there, you can see our track of the of the keyframes that we're adding as we go. Yeah, let's go in. Yeah, we kind of pulled out there a little bit. That's okay. We'll we'll get in a little closer on the next one. So let's go ahead and move around. And and uh, we'll uh, we'll get another one here. And I'm going to get a little closer on this one. We're going to click Add, and one more. So like I said, we're going to do a complete rotation around this guy. They're almost complete. There's one more. Okay, now let's raise up a little bit and drop that camera down and add another one. Go up a little higher, and I'm looking at the drone. The drone is higher above the uh, the tower here than you think. I, you know, I've got eyes on it. It looks like it's pretty close, but trust me, it's it's a ways up there. So let's add a keyframe right there. And what I'm interested to see is if the drone will then uh, will it then point the camera down when we get up this high. Sorry, I'm kind of focusing on two things. I notice when you point the camera down there, you can see where it's going to land, which is kind of cool, huh? Now let's pick that camera back up and drop down. Point at the tower. Let's add one more. So we're adding a lot of keyframes in a pretty close area here, so we'll see how it handles that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's back off a little bit, pick that camera back up, and let's go out here a ways. Let's go, uh, let's go out over the uh, uh, Discovery School here off in the distance. Added one there. And as you can see, uh, you know, the drone isn't terribly quick uh, unless you hit that turbo button. There's another one. One of the cool things about this drone that you can do is, for instance, uh, you can get into precision areas that you probably wouldn't do uh, with another drone. Uh, because you know you're not going to crash the thing. It has that kind of onboard intelligence. Uh, that will keep it from uh, from crashing into something. Something. So let's go down here a ways. Let's get her down fairly low, and let's add one more. Yeah, it's not liking that. We're kind of losing uh, connection here. I got so low there that uh, we were blocking connection. That's one of the things with that one of the negative things about the, uh, the Skydio 2 is that this controller, you don't have a lot of range. How far? We're 200 and some meters away. And, and I realized I was dropping down below the roof line of that building. But, uh, you know, the equivalent uh, DJI drone, you would have no problem with signal there. Uh, so it, I, I, this is one of the things that I wish uh, that, that uh, Skydio would do. Let's add another one there. And uh, yeah, then let's bring it back to us here. I'm gonna hit the turbo button.
that really speeds it up. Check that out. There's a turbo button and we're up to about 16 meters per second. So let's go, let's go around these, uh, let's add another keyframe there. And then let's, uh, let's go down around these uh, portable classrooms down here. Let's drop some altitude. And again, the cool thing about this drone is, is that it, uh, uh, you know, you're not worried about, uh, about it hitting anything because it's not going to. It's got that uh, onboard intelligence. Let's add another one right there. And you know, we're not very high off the ground. Yeah, we're one meter off the ground here. Uh, this is so cool. You know, what other drone would you do this with? Let's add another one here. And I'm wondering, that might confuse it a little bit. I've, I've, I've seen that before with this drone that it can, if you don't specify exactly, let's go up just a little. Let's see if we can get between these two classrooms here. And we'll add another one. And move forward. And add one more. And then let's bring it back to us. So this is a pretty elaborate uh, keyframe that we're, we're doing here. And just for the fun of it, let's uh, add one right in front of the light pole there. And I'm just going to go full stick forward and you'll see the drone will go around that light pole. <laughs> and let's add one right here. So this is a pretty, this is a pretty elaborate uh, keyframe that we're doing here. Let's see if we can get underneath these trees here. I'm not sure we can because of the bubble that this guy Add one there. Let's go down a little bit. And let's see what it'll do here. This might get it stuck. We'll see. We're going to add one there. And then let's move forward here. And it should be navigate clear through here. And it did. We're going to add one right there. And then let's bring it back to us. Let's get up in the air. And that'll be our last keyframe. Okie dokie, so I'm gonna click done. Yep, okay. Oh shoot, I, I click done and, and it's heading it's heading to that keyframe that I just highlighted. So as you can see, uh, that was unintentional. So what we want to do is we want to start at the first keyframe. So what I did there when I was clicking done, I didn't think I took it, and I clicked it again and it headed to that one. So but let's click on the first one down here. Well, that's the second one. There we got the first one. So it's coming back to us. And as soon as it gets here, and we're down, yeah, we're down to 46% battery, so we better get it in gear here, uh, and we will start the mission. And there it stopped at its first keyframe. And, uh, and let's hit start. And there goes the drone. And uh, you can see it's just following that, uh, that purple line, and I can increase the speed here. on the slider and then we'll slow it down as we go up the uh, I want it to slow down as, it, as we go up the uh, by the tower itself by the head of the uh, tower and let's see how it does it's hitting those keyframes just perfectly 
just like we uh, we flew when we when we set the keyframes. So the one that I'm going to be interested in is where we go over the top of it. Yeah, and I can see the camera. Yeah, it's, it, it kind of went over the top of it there. Yeah, that wasn't quite how we had set it up, but it's it's going directly from keyframe to keyframe. Yeah. Eh, so kind of interesting. You can see the limitations there. So let's go ahead and speed it up as we're heading this way. Once we got past the tower there, there was uh, no point in slowing down. So I'm picking up the, uh, the, the camera with the gimbal here so you can see where we're going. And let's see how low it'll get here. Yeah, it's getting right down as low as we were. Yeah, so it's kind of backing around and backing out of, uh, of where we were at there. Yeah, doing it just exactly what we uh, programmed. Now, the, the only thing I'm going to say is that you'll notice that it's mostly just going from keyframe to keyframe. So I'm almost thinking you'd want to put it in free mode so that you could point the camera where, where you wanted it to be. Uh, in a situation like that. So as it's flying the keyframe mission, you could then move the camera however you wanted. And through another one. So let's see how it does as it gets down to these, uh, down there to the uh, portable classrooms here. There we go. I love that it's that close to the ground. And yeah, also it, 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 we flew between them, as you recall, and there it kind of flew over the top. So let's see, I want to see how it navigates this going through these trees here. Let's see what it does. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, I mean, it did that perfectly. And yeah, we are uh, we're at the last keyframe here. Okay, so we are down to 28% uh, battery. I'm going to get I'm going to go into uh, uh, motion track, and let's manually fly the drone out here a ways, and uh, let's hit return to home, and see if it'll find the. Uh, find the case here. So I'm going to hit uh, the home button on the app and launch point is where we want to come back to. And it took that command immediately. And let's see if it'll hit the case here. If it sees the case, it should tilt the camera down. And I'm watching it come down here and boy does it, it comes down fast. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to see the case or not. We'll see. Yeah, let's uh, let's drop that camera down. It's not. I forgot. This guy doesn't land. You actually have to tell it to land. I forgot about that. So uh, let's move it over. I, I dropped the camera down. Let's move it over the top, over where it has a chance of seeing the case. And it should uh, it should land right on top of the case. So there we go. So I'm going to click land on the uh, on the uh, app. Didn't hold it down long enough. There we go. Yeah, and it spotted the case there. So what we should see is the drone will land smack dab on the uh, Skydio 2 case. Pretty trick stuff. I can see maybe I should have folded that. Uh, And look at that, it just lands spot on the case there. Uh, what I was going to say is I probably should have folded that shoulder strap up. So, uh, okay. Let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, okay, so that's keyframes with the Skydio 2. Uh, 
That is just a phenomenal little piece of autonomy with this drone and it never ceases to amaze me. And you saw the way the drone uh, threads the needles uh, through some of these places, especially when we went through the trees over here. Uh, it just found its way through uh, no problem and you know around the light pole and, and all that stuff. It's just a drone that you don't worry about uh, pushing the throttle forward on it because it's not going to run into anything. Uh, and it's just a very capable product. Now, you know, if we're talking, again, this thing came out in 2019. Of course, now they have, I think they call it the Skydio 2 Plus, I believe, that's got antennas and gets a little better uh, reception than the original Skydio 2. But other than that, they're pretty much identical. I think the new one has uh, a bigger battery capacity as well. Uh, and I'm going to say for sure that, you know, while this camera looked really good in 2019, and it still looks good, don't get me wrong, but it's been upstaged by some of the newer products from both DJI and Autel for sure. Uh, however, I, I, th I still think it looks really good, and it's got that uh, GoPro style of color saturation that I think is particularly popular with action sports. And to be honest, that's what this drone is for. It's... Uh, for tracking and action sports. And you, you can see there are, I can see how this keyframe uh, would be, uh, ability would be good if you're doing some real estate photography and stuff. Or for instance, if, if you're just trying to get a repeatable flight path someplace, uh, you, can, you can save those keyframes and, and do it over and over again. I, as a matter of fact, I think Billy Kyle said, for instance, if you are, uh, trying to track progress on construction or something, you could set up a keyframe around that construction site and you could just have the drone repeat it over and over again and you could do it over a period of time and, and watch that uh, construction site grow. And then also you saw what we did with the cell phone tower over there. I, I suspect there's some applications in that regard too, doing inspections and so forth, uh, so that you can repeat your inspection over and over again. In other words, every time you come back to that bridge or that tower or whatever it is, you can have it fly the exact same flight path that you did uh, uh, the previous time. Uh, so anyway, I just, uh, I'm still really enjoying this drone and uh, I don't fly it enough. I'm going to try and get this guy out a little bit more. Uh, I guess that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Oh yeah, a shout out to my friends at the Drone Seekers. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Drone Seekers channel, you need to check it out. We do a, a, a live show uh, every Sunday. It would be at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, noon Pacific Time. Uh, and then in, in Europe, let's if you're in the UK, let's see, it would be at uh, 8 p.m. And for my friends in southern Spain, I believe it's at 9 p.m. Hey, okay, I'm going to throw some bonus footage in on the end of this video that I took while I was out at uh, Kleiner Park. It was another keyframe mission that I did out there going between trees and so forth. So uh, uh, you can stick around if you want to see that. Uh, but anyway, thank you for taking the time to uh, look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. Bye now. Thank you.